Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'm talking about Baba, right? So Baba I've talked about on this channel late last year on my November watch list. I did include Baba on there and um, Baba is quite an interesting one because Baba had dropped quite a bit from its all-time highs because of news around the Chinese government starting to investigate Baba for being anti-competitive. So I'll talk about that later on in this video and um, I've also recently bought even more Baba stock. I've actually been accumulating quite a lot of Baba stock at this now, roughly 7% of my portfolio. And the reason why I did buy Baba does really come down to valuation. I think the current valuation of this stock really does already incorporate and already price in a lot of the risk involved with Baba, right? So I'll be talking about that in today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. And as always, not financial advice, purely for entertainment purposes only. You can read the full disclaimer down below. I'm not telling you to buy Baba stock, but to do your own research before you start investing. With no time wasted, let's get right into the video. So Baba is currently trading at $251.65. They're up 3.36%. For the year, they are up 13.22%. And as you can see here, for the most of 2020, they have been on an upwards trend. But then once it got to this point over here, it started going downhill. So basically this dip was when Jack Ma said some stuff that was quite critical um, against the CCP over the handling of the Rona. And um, they then, the, what the CCP did, the Chinese government did uh, shut down the anti-IPO. So that caused that dip over here. And this drop over here was caused by an announcement by the Chinese government saying that they have initiated an investigation on Alibaba for being anti-competitive, right? So the share price has then further dropped. And uh, since then, the share price did slightly recover from the lows of, I think, $220 to now $251. The market cap for this company is 5.45 trillion RMB, which is roughly 700 billion US dollars. Just to give you a little bit of a recap, Alibaba is growing their business at quite a reasonable clip. Total revenue growth is 30% year over year and they are growing revenues at quite a large base. So that is a really impressive revenue growth number. Core commerce, which is the core business. So e-commerce through their Alibaba shop as well as Tmall has grown 29% year over year. Their cloud computing division is up 60% year on year. So this is the high growth uh, division. It's still not a significant chunk of revenues, but this will continue to grow into quite a significant chunk of Alibaba's revenue going forward. In terms of consumers, they have roughly 881 million mobile monthly active users across their platforms. And Alibaba is a profitable business. They have $6 billion of non-GAAP free cash flow for the September quarter. So if you project that out over four quarters, then free cash flow for the year is roughly $24 billion. So that is a very impressive number. This company is spitting out free cash flow like no tomorrow. And um, this is quite rare to find such a profitable business at such low valuations. And I'll show you why later with my intrinsic value calculation. So now just to give you a little bit of an update on more recent news, uh, last week it was announced that Alibaba has launched an electric car in a tie up with SAIC. All right, the trio formally launched the venture on December 25th. SAIC is the largest shareholder with a 54% stake, while Baba and Shanghai Zhangjiang each hold 18%. Alibaba and SAIC first connected on developing high-tech models in 2014, so this relationship goes way back. And this is not the first time Alibaba has been involved in the EV space. So they are a major investor in domestic EV startup Xpeng. And you might have heard of Xpeng before, they did IPO last year. The share price is up 153% since last year and Baba does hold 12.49% stake in Xpeng according to Simply Wall Street. So Baba has been quite successful so far in their investments in the EV startup space and I won't be surprised if the joint venture with SAIC is also successful just because Baba does have quite a huge influence in China and they have a lot of free cash flow as well so they can continue spending money on the EV startups, all right? So Baba is a great investor to have if you are a startup and I think you know both parties 
will benefit from this venture. In other news, today it was announced that Omez has joined Alibaba's Tmall. So Alibaba's Tmall is basically an online shop that is catered towards luxury brands. And this is a good sign for Alibaba's e-commerce side of things. Omez will probably be a really small chunk of their revenues. It will probably be really insignificant. However, it is a sign that Alibaba is still continuing to expand the product offerings on their platforms, attracting more vendors, and as a result will also attract more customers. And therefore, this will be a business that will continue to grow in the long term. It probably won't grow as much as 29% going forward. However, I think it will still do really well in the long term. And at the end of the day, it is e-commerce that is generating a lot of free cash flow for the business to pump into other more innovative divisions like the EV startup space. However, there is some bad news for Alibaba as well, especially with more regulation coming in to 2021, starting with Alibaba. So in this article over here, it said that until last year, China's tech titans like Alibaba ran largely unencumbered by regulation. However, starting in 2020, the government has shown an increased concern over an increasing powerful tech industry. It has hardened its antitrust laws in an initial step to gain greater control of the private sector. These attempts seem to align with a renewed antitrust scrutiny in the US and Europe focused on digital platforms concentration of power. So this is quite an important uh, piece of news over here and this will be built into our intrinsic value calculation. Essentially with increased regulation comes increased costs. So going forward, the free cash flow growth probably wouldn't be as high as previous years. And so this is an important piece of information and that will be built into our intrinsic value calculation. The article also says that the motives and responses differ significantly between West and China. So the West are motivated by competition concerns and aim to mitigate harm to consumers. On the other hand, the Chinese Political Bureau relies on maintaining an authoritarian state and has opted for a show of force making an example of Alibaba. So that really comes back to what Jack Ma did uh, late last year when he made those comments about the Chinese government's handling of the Roni Rona. And I was just talking to a Chinese friend of mine and she was saying basically that because of this um, whole situation, Jack Ma really looks like a bad guy in Chinese media, right? And um, there's not really much reporting over it, so there is definitely some censorship going on at the moment. And Jack Ma is just hiding to let this whole situation die down a little bit. It is probably a good thing for Alibaba shareholders as well. So over here, I have the free cash flow calculation for Baba. And I got the bare bones of this template from Sven Carlin's uh, YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. But um, over here, basically what I have is uh, the historical information of uh, Alibaba. So over the past five years, what I noted down was the um, operating cash flows. And I also then recalculated free cash flows by taking out the capex numbers over the years. So the capex numbers include net change in PP and E, net change in intangible assets, as well as net changes in acquisitions slash divestitures. So when calculating free cash flow, I had two numbers. One is free cash flow, including the money spent on uh, acquisitions and divestitures, and also a second number, free cash flow, excluding acquisitions and divestitures. Now, this is quite an important difference. Basically, when you're traditionally calculating free cash flow, you wouldn't include any one-off spend on any acquisitions. So when a company acquires another business, usually that's quite a significant investment, and usually it's a one-off type of investment. You don't expect that to be recurring. But if you look at Alibaba's numbers, they actually do spend uh, quite a large amount on acquiring new businesses and that makes sense that does time with their business model They are spending a lot of money on these innovative companies in that innovative division, right? So they don't only operate cloud as well as e-commerce They're also in a wide range of other industries as well such as tourism and now EVs as well And a bunch of other different industries as well, right? So I've included the acquisitions and divestitures in my calculation and this is the number that i will be using and over the five years they have grown 
their free cash flow at a compounded annual growth rate of 25.19%. And what I did was then I took the shares outstanding at the end of each of those financial years and I calculate free cash flow per share. Now free cash flow per share as at 2020 is roughly $7.05. So that will be the number that I'll be using in my free cash flow calculation. So first, let's take a look at the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario, I have Alibaba growing free cash flow at 15% for the next five years and then decreasing to 10% uh, between years five to 10. So the reason why this is a pretty conservative assumption is because they have been growing their free cash flow at 25% compounded. So to show that there's more political risk now, there's more risk of regulation, which would increase costs. I suspect free cash flow won't grow as quick as it has in the past. And so I've reduced their growth rate from 25% to 15% and further reduced it from years five to 10 to 10 percent just because you know as revenue grows and as the numbers get bigger it is harder to grow off a large base discount rate wise i use 10 percent because we want to outperform the index so an index usually returns six to eight percent i'm just going to use 10 percent over here and what i've done is i've discounted each of these cash flows um, by 10 percent discount rate and i give it a terminal multiple of 15 times um, I think that's pretty reasonable for a company growing at 10% annually and this is also quite a uh, established company, a blue chip stock, very consistent and high quality cash flows. And to be fair, the current free cash flow multiple is 37 times roughly. So this is still a pretty reasonable terminal multiple because at the end of year 10, what I'm saying is I'm, I'll be able to sell this company at a 15 times terminal multiple. And this gives me an intrinsic value calculation of $216.52. That is below the current share price as of the closing of 19th of Jan 2021. But this is the worst case scenario possible, all right? So this includes regulation, throw in, Ant doesn't get an IPO, throw in, decreasing growth rates. This is what happens, all right? So that's not far off from where the current share price is. Now, if I open my normal case, the difference between my normal and my bear case is I increase the growth rates from 15 to 20%. Remember, this 20% is still below the 25% KGA that they've experienced. Furthermore, then I decrease the growth rate to 15% for years 5 to 10. I use the same discount rate but a higher terminal multiple because they have grown at 15% at year 10. So for a 15% growing company, I would pay roughly 20 times as a terminal multiple. This gives me a present value of roughly $380. For the best case, I assume that growth rate doesn't really change because the company has been growing at 25%. There hasn't been a significant impact of regulation. And I assume, you know, they'll be able to do well over the long term, continue to grow at 20% between years five to 10. I give it a terminal multiple of 25 times, which is pretty reasonable for a company growing at 20%. And this gives me a present value of $567.78. Now, then I assign a probability to each of these cases. And um, I only give the best case scenario a 10% probability because I think that is unlikely to happen. I don't think um, there won't be any impact on regulation. And furthermore, you know, because Alibaba is growing off a large base, growing at 25% for the next five years is quite hard to actually achieve. So I only assign that a 10% probability. Now, then I assign the remaining 90% across worst case as well as normal case, because I think there is a good chance that Alibaba will be hurt from the increase in regulation, all right? Chances are they will have an increase in expenses and free cash flow won't grow as fast as it had in the past. And I also give it a 45% probability for the normal case because that is still a fairly reasonable and conservative assessment of the business. So now that gives us a uh, present value of $325.51. Now this is the enterprise value. So we have to add on cash less the debt. So on a per share basis, they have roughly $19 of cash and a per share basis roughly $6.63 of debt, which gives us an equity value per share of 
$351.15. Currently, the share price is $251.65. So this gives us a margin of safety of roughly 28% on a discount rate of 10%. So at the current share price, I think this is really cheap at the moment. I think a lot of the political risk has already been included in the share price. There is a good mix between value and growth in this stock as well. So this meets my investment criteria. There is a decent margin of safety. A lot of the political risk, in my opinion, has already been factored into the valuation. I might continue to buy in at current prices. However, it's already 7% of my portfolio. So I'm pretty happy with where I am standing at the moment. However, if the share price continues to drop, then I won't hesitate to add more shares in Baba. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about Baba and my assumptions as well. So always happy to hear what your thoughts are on this company. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe and thank you for watching guys until next time take care